November was a strong month for global equity markets, with markets around the world rising between 5 and 15%, including the ASX, which was up 6.4%, including dividends. Optimism was buoyed by better than expected inflation numbers, and we're starting to see some encouraging signs on that front. Core inflation numbers remain far too high and jobs markets far too hot for central uh, banker comfort. But some really key components of inflation are falling and in some cases falling fast. Used car prices in the US, for example, are now down year on year. Petrol prices have fallen quite significantly and lumber prices are back to where they were in 2018. March through to August of 2023, we're going to be comparing prices of those items with the peaks of this 2022 year, and they'll be, they'll be contributing very, very significantly negatively to the headline inflation numbers. Whether they're right or wrong, investors have got confidence that that is going to give central bankers some breathing room and long-term interest rates have fallen quite substantially, hence the rally in equities. Let's jump onto the funds now, and I'll bring Alex Shevalev in to talk about our Aussie portfolio. Hi Alex, the net asset value for the Australian Shares Fund jumped 5.7% in November, taking the recovery since 30 June to 21%. What's been driving the returns? Well, there's been a lot of takeover action in the portfolio this whole financial year, and even more so in November. Now, the first of these is ReadyTech. This is a business that does enterprise software for the likes of employment, for education, and for government. Now, the company received a bid at a near 40% premium to where it was currently trading on the very first day of November, in fact. And what are the prospects for success with this particular bid? Well, the second largest shareholder here, MicroEquities, has said that they're not supportive of this bid. And with their 15% stake, that makes a, a deal quite difficult, although not impossible, to consummate. Now, one that's looking more likely, another takeover bid in the fund, taking the total already this financial year to five, is for a small golf and club software company called MSL Solutions. This has been a problem child of ours for a number of years, so particularly pleasing to see this one come along. Well, that's right, and long-term readers and uh, viewers of, uh, of our videos would have seen MSL is one where we had to get a little bit active including a new management team that came into the business a couple of years ago. Now, they've been quite successful in turning that business around, and here, after a couple of years, have achieved a pretty good result for shareholders. It's actually likely to go through, given the premium and uh, the valuation achieved. Yes, yeah, so 29 and a half cents, the bid for MSL there, when uh, we replaced the board and the management team a few years ago, that share price was 10 cents. So. It has been a good outcome for shareholders. It hasn't just been takeover news driving portfolio returns though, it's been good news elsewhere. Well, that's right. Gentrax is a good example of this. This is another software company, but one for utilities and for airports. Now, Gentrax uh, has been on a run of uh, profit upgrades the last little while, revenue upgrades more precisely, and that continued with a good revenue result, 20% growth on the prior year and upped targets for this current financial year to September and the next financial year as well. Now, Gentrac uh, is also talking about higher levels of growth from 2025 onwards, and they're investing a lot of money now into new products that will see that growth rate come to fruition. Yep, that turnaround well and truly underway. Thanks for that, Alex. We'll get Chloe in now to talk about the international fund portfolio. The international shares fund unit price was down a touch for the month with a very strong Aussie dollar offsetting the market gains and small caps continuing to lag behind their larger brethren. Chloe, what was happening in the international fund portfolio? Well, it was a busy month for the fund. We had lots of reporters and like you mentioned, stock prices were generally up and that was the case for our portfolio as well. Yeah, investors are not as worried about inflation as they were, but they're still very worried about the economic impact of higher interest rates looking into 2023. Absolutely. Stocks like Autodesk, Keysight, Sony and Flutter have bounced a lot off their lows. And this is because investors perceive them as businesses that are not overly sensitive to the economic cycle. And they've reported results that have confirmed this fact. Flutter had a big investor day in the US as well. Yeah, so it was a bit of a different story for Flutter. They had the Capital Markets Day and they focused on the US business Banjul. So the stock price moves at largely in relation to performance in that US sports betting market rather than just general resilience. 
So resilience is being really well rewarded, but that was not the case at Cryoport. Yes, we thought Cryoport was going to be really resilient. We thought demand for their cryogenic freezers would remain strong throughout any kind of economic environment. And unfortunately, that was not the case in the third quarter. And management are also expecting a kind of similar decline in demand in the next quarter as well. Hopefully with Cryoport, that's a one or two quarter event. The long term prospects for that business look uh, pretty good. Got some other stocks going through more difficult demand environments. Uh, what was happening at that end of the portfolio? And I guess this is where the stock market has been really punishing some share prices. Yes, our auto exposed stocks have been suffering, but to varying degrees. As anybody who has purchased, been looking to purchase a new car over the recent years would know, volumes of new vehicle production have been down pretty significantly over the past couple of years. This is starting to get better and that's reflected in the performance of uh, parts manufacturer Linamar. Our used car dealership listed in the UK though, Motorpoint, needs these volumes to recover for 18 months or more before we'll start to see that turning up in the bottom line. Yep, investors will have to be patient with that one. Thanks Chloe. This rally over the past couple of months has taken the Miski World Index back to a level that could hardly be described as cheap. It's trading at about 17 times earnings. But the discrepancies are extremely wide and particularly in small cap land, there are lots of opportunities out there. Thanks for tuning in.